Hello YouTube, it is Damien, it is Sunderland, it is Bright Lights, it is episode 12 of Bright Lights and here we are in the championship, we are currently on the 17th of September and we've got a double header today against two of our old foes, we've got a double header against AFC Wimbledon and Barnsley, now you might be saying, Damien, but we've seen games against AFC Wilbur and Barnsley. Why have you gone with them two? Uh, Wilbur are up in 6th, Barnsley are up in 7th, and we are down in 14th where the bookies had us penciled in to finish at the end of the year. At the moment, I think the bookies are right. We're actually in not the best of form, but at the same time, we're not losing games as well. Um, as you can see down here, we've got one win, five draws, and a loss with eight points. Um, the one loss did come against a Birmingham City side that are meant to be predicted to finish 19th and flying as high as 5th. Now, for ourselves in this run of form, our struggle hasn't been scoring goals, it's been conceding goals, and then in games where we don't concede goals, we just don't score in. It's been a weird old time. As we remember against Ipswich, we obviously, in the last episode, if you haven't watched, watched that, one of the greatest bottle drops of all time. Uh, I think we had over 60% possession, and they scored in the 94th minute through some of the most FME goals that you've ever seen in your life. Duncan Watmore got injured, and out of this whole run, Duncan Watmore is back for his second game this game around. I played him off the bench last game. Um... As you can see here, what an FM. This is going to be a little bit of a theme being FM'd a little bit. This game here was quite even, and Brentford probably deserved to win it. Major in the 89th minute, though, what a lad is Joss Major. Obviously, with Denisov being injured, Renart Denisov actually came back from injury in his first game off the bench in his debut for the club, actually scored a last minute equaliser against someone as well. Um, but as you can see here, we do win the ball back. It is a bit of a longer highlight. We're just going to get to the back end of it. It's just Major doing Major things in the box. You know, the ball gets cut out, it comes back out, and then the ball eventually falls to Madger in the box, and there you go. Um, that's how it becomes a 1-1. Um, we then lost 2-1 to Fulham in the Cabaret Cup. I kind of threw this game. Um, you know, we give Issam a running goals. He hasn't been playing too much because, you know, John, out of all the players, Yon and Mr. McLaughlin, or John as I like to call him, has been pulling off saves left, right, and centre. As much as he doesn't get the overall, or the, uh, sorry, the rating, or the overall rating that he deserves as a goalkeeper on FM, some of the saves that he's pulling off is crazy, and I've been happy to keep by him. We then finally got our first win against Swansea. Now, I was actually tempted to do the Swansea game because they're old and hull together, but considering I just did dip switch, I decided not to. Same with the Birmingham game, because Birmingham, when they played this third, um, decided to wait until we got into September because doing a couple of episodes in the same month, not in a, you know, unless it's a title race thing, um, I'm not too big on because then you're pumping out a little bit too much episode too quickly. Um, but anyway, we got a 2 1 win here against um, Swansea. Zach Clough finally getting his first goal for the club. We went 1 0 down, we got a penalty back, and then Cloughy scored a late doors. It wasn't anything special, just, you know, just a standard 1 on 1 um, that Cloughy didn't miss, and it was good from us. We actually went to up top as well, chasing um, Swansea at 1 0 down, we scored, and then got one more at the end as well. And it wasn't a bad way for us. We then drew 1 1 with Hull, and then in this whole game as well, you know, once again, dominating possession, dominating chances, just giving up silly little goals. Um, it does happen. It, it, most of the goals we seem to be conceding always seem to be balls over the top. And, you know, even against Birmingham when we conceded, you know, I can't pronounce his name, but Zukowitz or whatever he is, the, you know, classic target man. Um, when we see it here, where he is, um, Lucas, just... Some of the stuff are just ridiculous. They scored once again in the dying minutes of this game. And in this game here too, you can see that we gave them some chances, but we dominated the ball yet again. Some of the ball, some of the balls we are playing through are not bad. Now, this is the last minute equaliser from Denisov. It was a great finish. But as you can see, these are the sort of goals we have also been conceding. A lot from corners, but a lot like this. Um, it's just been a bit annoying here uh, because... Out of all the games that's been happening, it's been... Uh, and this highlights how good Yon's playing. Like, that's a great save from Yon. That's ridiculous from Yon. And then Adams puts it in. It happened maybe a bit quick for maybe everybody. But, you know, if it goes back to the pitch and we can go through it again, um, we'll slot it right down. There you are. As you can see, Yon makes a save as it clears off Roberts. He gets tackled to Davies, who's put at bottom bins, and Yon goes from the impossible range. And then if Yon somehow saved that on the floor, I would have probably been, I'll have your kids, you are the best. But unfortunately for him, it didn't happen. We then drew new new against Cardiff in a game that we batted them in. Couldn't find the back of the net. Gooch got injured again. So we had to rush Duncan and Watmore back in for this game against Reading. Um, but we decided to play Gooch, who was not 100% fit for this one, and brought Watmore off the bench. Just couldn't find the back of the net yet again. This game here, though, as much as we had the ball, Reading seemed to just play off the break and pepper us over the top. 
Um, but yeah, so there's a few things we have to get through. The first thing that we also have to get through is Luizano didn't got his work permit turned down. I don't understand how. He's been playing recently for the under twenties, which counts as a point towards the under to the work permit. I'm pretty sure because he playing um, because under the work permit rules it does. Um, he also play he also paid a fairly reasonable fee for us to come here, and he's on big wage. So to me, because of his big wages in the top twenty five percent of the club wages. He should be getting three points for that, and then just needs a point from somewhere else. So I think he's not getting a point. Like, if we go to the work permit rules, three points if the fee's in top 25%, obviously he's not. Two points if the fee's in the top 25%, no, obviously it's not. Um, we didn't pay seven mil. Three points of the player wage in the top 25 of the 30%, yes it is. So there's three points there, right? One point if the player's an active club in the top six clubs playing for Europe, for Europe, it's not, because obviously we're in the Prem. One point if he played for the Abbott Club two top leagues in South America, he wasn't, but he got promoted in that. And then there's an international thing as well, like if you're playing internationally. Um, but I just don't know. At the end of the day, worst comes to worst, if we get promoted, probably doesn't look like this year, but next year, and we loan him out for a couple of years, when we get promoted to the Prem, he'll get 3% for the top 25%, our three points, and then a point for playing in the top six leagues in Europe because he's playing in the Prem. Um, so then he gets his four points and we'll be able to use him. It just sucks because playing, he's playing for Brazil, um, it's under 20s, which counts when you go for your when you apply for the work permit as when you're making the transfer. It says that if he, they're under 21 players and he's playing in the under 20s, that it counts towards games because he's playing recently. Um, unfortunately for us, it's not happening and he's growing a little bit too. Um, I'm going to try and loan him out and hopefully get him on loan for a long term loan somewhere. Um, and hopefully, just Brazil start playing. I doubt it, but you know you can see why. At the end of the day, if we, even if we get stuck here for a couple of years, we probably sell him on for more than we paid for him. So you know we only paid three mil. So I would imagine we're going to sell him on for a lot more than that to a Premier League side in the future as well. But that's where the squad is at the moment. Am I happy with us being in 14th? No, because I think we should at least have three wins out of those games that we have played. But at the same time. The board wants us to finish mid the table. We are currently in the middle of the pack. The dynamics here are not too bad as well. So, all being all, it's okay. I'm actually going to worry about that scouting report after this game as well because we've probably talked for a little bit too long and we have a game to get into against AFC Wilburton. Wilburton, on the other hand, are flying in sixth. Barnsley up in seventh. I think this is our best starting 11 at the moment. Uh, Maguire's on 100% fit and Liam Miller... Um, look, you got to remember the young kid's not bad. I don't know why his determination's going down. Um, that's a bit of a worry. Um, it hasn't started too well to life here. Um, so we're going to play off the bench. So we're going to give McGuire, um as much game time as possible to try and get a bit fit. I'm also worried about Kone's form because Kone's form has been atrocious. A lot of the goals have been his fault particularly. And as you can see, he hasn't really had a good game as that for um, pre-season where he beat um, Roger G JC. Um, but we'll see how we go. But we've got McLaughlin, Linus has been playing well, Garcia, Kona, Oviedo has been playing well, Joe Pelusi, Dylan, Max Power, Watmore, Maguire, and Dadasov. Um, I've not been happy with the midfield three as well. We've been winning the midfield battle, but not being creative enough. I've thrown Turam in there. I've thrown Brian in there. I have thrown Barley in there. He's not on the bench today. I've tried it all. There's a part of me that wants to switch to the narrow system very soon to see if we can maybe get a result with two strikers up top. Sacrifice the, sacrifice the wingers and Duncan Watmore. Maybe use him as an impact sub. But Watmore has been injured, so we'll wait and we'll see. We're going to get into this game, though, here. Maguire's lacking the fitness. That's fine. We'll probably bring Miller on because I still reckon he has a lot of growth. It does it young Josh Miller. But they have Vassell Piggott playing in a 4-4-2. Oops, and Jay Spearing, a former Liverpool man. Man, those were the dark days. Um, Yanaman there. I reckon he is just been bought from Liverpool. Oh, on a free. There we go. Um, as you can see, still lining up in our 4-3-3. Three, three. There is a case to maybe switch to 4 2 three, one but that defensively makes us less solid. And if we've been conceding goals, I don't want to do that as well. I'm just going to try and just pump them up, tell them there's a lot more to come from you. Um, this group of players really respond to me, which is good. Got to obviously listen to our assistant as well. Obviously, we're going to be in the red, and Wilburton will be in the blue. And can we go out there against an AFC Wilburton side and get ourselves a result? Joe Paluzzi, though, finds Kone early doors. And let's see what happens here today as well. Sorry for no strength last night as well. I haven't been feeling too well. I still have a little bit of an earache as the corner comes in and it's headed away. Um, Harry, um, Chris McGuire from distance in the end. It was a good save from Woods. It moved around everywhere in, through the air for the keeper as it whipped viciously away from him. Um, but yeah, a bit of an earache, a bit of a sinus sort of, you know, not feeling 100% after cricket yesterday. But, um, so we kind of went to bed at like 7.30. We woke up, it was like 11. So I watched a bit of Premier League and went back to bed. Um, I have work later on, so I won't be streaming today as Chris McGuire whips in this ball towards the back post. Joe Paluzzi's hit the post. 
The story of the save for us so far in the championship is all these chances don't go in, and the first chance you'll see Wimbledon go forward, I can nearly guarantee you they will score. Joe Polizio though, finds a max power, finds Joe Polizio, what a tackle from Vasily, but it falls to Duncan Watmore in his first start since his injury. Finds Chris Maguire, he's hit the bar. I'm getting very frustrated if no one's told, because I've been up um, simming for an hour to get to these games before work, and this is all I've been watching. 69% possession, 8 shots for on target after 25 minutes. We are looking good. But at the same time, no scoreboard pressure. We're down in 15th as things stand. I'm going to tell the lads just to get creative for the last 10 minutes of the half and see if we can work some. Oviedo hit a free kick in the first episode, and he's hit a free kick in the second episode of the championship as well. Maybe we should just do a live comms every single game. So Oviedo scores free kicks. He has scored two goals this season. The first one was a free kick from a bit closer in, but more top bins. This one has just moved a lot for the keeper. The keeper couldn't get there. He couldn't reposition in time to the, to the swerve on the ball. And that one there is 1-0 Sunderland. If we're relying on Oviedo hitting free kicks for us to score, we're in a little bit of trouble. Um, I reckon I'm going to give Dadasov a lot of time, though. It takes a while to get grown into the league. At the same time, though, we should be all right. We've limited the one shot, nothing on target. I um, don't want to get complacent, though, lads. And we'll see how we go. Linus there, not looking. He looks stressed. You weren't that bad, but have faith in you. Still look stressed. That's fine, Linus. One of the new songs. Been playing okay. He's been solid. Like, when the back four keeps conceding and it's not his fault, you know, his rating is always 6.8, so... You know, it just is what it is. I don't know why Kone always, in games where we haven't conceded yet, always is on the 6.6. .6. I don't get it. And I'm very worried at Leeds. Leeds has been scoring a lot of goals of late as well. For us at the moment, we can win this game up to 11, which is huge. As time's ticking away here, there's a highlight for them. I was going to say, maybe we might look to make a change, especially for Maguire's. He's not 100% fit, and we'd like to start him against Barnsley as well. As Bullet runs forward, ups and ups and long ball towards Wazguf. Kone heads away, though, and falls to Dylan, who's been one of the key lads for us. And it's a long ball towards Dadasov. He's being forced away from goal. Instead, he hits it across the keeper. Rena Dadasov, and that finishing has proven delightful just then. What a finish from the lad. It is 2-0. I was just saying, he's been forced away from goal. So you usually see them play as high or wide or not at all pretty. But Dadasov, with his composure, with his finishing, with his determination, just to go, no, nah, I'm putting this between both. Look at the curve on that one there. Just move away from the keeper into the bottom bins. Makes it 2 Nil. Maybe we're actually going to go on and win this game here. We're not going to make that, you know, that statement too early. I'm just going to bring Liam Miller as an inside forward. I'm actually going to bring Brian on. Brian's been growing quite well. He's going to tell me he's not been growing at all. But he has been growing quite well with that potential. So I've been trying to feed him games wherever I can. And he can play box to box. I'm actually going to bring him just a little bit more drawn as an advanced playmaker on support. Actually, nah. We're 2 new up. Advanced playmaker on attack. Go and impact the game similar to how we used to do it at HK and see what we can do. As Linus throws the ball into Dadasov here. Dadasov there. Go back to Linus. Brian in this advanced position here. Dadasov back to Dylan McLaughlin. Dylan is deflected. It's fallen to Josh Miller. I think Miller was offside. The goal has been given. Miller scores his first goal for Sunderland. It looked off. I'm not going to lie. We did get one in the FA Cup um, last year, which was definitely miles offside. If they're telling me that he's purposely played that ball and that that's not offside because of that, that's a joke because he's not attempted to play this ball. It's a deflection. Miller is a half, a metre and a half offside, at least. But we'll take it and that's 3-0. We'll, we'll watch it here now. All right, so he's offside when Dadasov plays it. That's fine. But it's more from when Dylan smacks it. Look how far off he is. He's not attempted to play that ball. That's not a defensive header or whatever you want to say. That is just poor from FM's match engine. But we're not going to complain. That's another goal. And there we go. Oviedo to throw this one in here. Finds Dadasov. We haven't been scoring goals freely in games in a while. So this is a good turn of fortune for us. Finds Oviedo. Oviedo, his ball in towards Josh Miller off the bench. Been pretty good. Miller there holding the ball up. Gets tackled. And Nightingale will be able to clear up the line. And it will find Nazon. Poor Tackle there, I'm guessing that's Kone number 23. It would be, because I'm pretty sure I've named him, I've numbered him after Jamie Carragher. As Naoza, his boy over the top, Vassalel was in. Vassalel 1v1 against Jan. What a save from Jan. That's what I mean. He's been making saves left, right, and center. I love him. Oviedo now. We will make our last change soon. Dylan now on the ball. Finds Joe Peluzzi. Peluzzi finds Brian. Brian gets absolutely taken there from Hardigan. And Hardigan's ball towards Vassalou. He's going to find him. Linus in chase. Can't get there. Kone's come across. Why have we got three people pressing the ball? Naozes flicks on. Bullets there. They deserve to score because I don't know why all three of them have gone and no one's decided the man marking in the middle. 
we can't keep a clean sheet. I feel for Yon. When Yon has to defend this, just have a look at this. I know the replay speed's low. We'll put it back on. Vasily, that, what is all this? That's under 10 stuff. There we are. As Steven Gerrard said recently, under 12 and under 13s know how to defend better than that. But we're not talking about clearing the left and right foot. We're talking about someone man marking or going to the ball. I don't think that's because of the system. If that's because of the system, that's a bit weird. Anyhow, once again, because of that, Kone is down to a 6.7. Um, who do we want to take off here? Watmore's not been at his best. Um, we could bring Clough in as well, maybe. Um, yeah, we might bring one of the youngsters on. We might bring just Turum on there for Dylan and just say to Dylan, good game today. And that's what we will do instead. Um, Dylan has made two assists there at 8.4. He's been really good. He wasn't very great in the champ uh, in Skybet League 1, but in the championship, he's been outstanding. Anyhow, Linus finds Duncan Watmore. Watmore now with the ball, still with Watmore, still with Duncan. It looks like it's going to be full-time. It is full-time. And as we turn on the stream, we finally get ourselves another win in the championship. Um, the stream, the episode, the live com. I'm very pleased with the result and the way we've gone. Um, it looks like Oviedo is going to get man of the match there. He's a team leader. I would love to make him captain, but unfortunately, with his five leadership, it isn't going to happen. Um, we're going to get into the inbox. Um, one game's pretty fruitless. We're going to do the press conference off stream. Going to quickly save the game. We'll stop the recording here. And for everybody on YouTube, be right back in the click of a finger. We'll have the second game of this episode against Barnsley. Welcome back, YouTube. Game number two of this doubleheader against Barnsley. We're at home at the Bright Light Stadium, or the Stadium of Light is what it's actually called. But here we go. This is our team. Just a couple of changes. Decided to take Kone out with his poor form and bring Bear Hill in, who is our still our club captain. And he's been playing decently when he has come in. You know, the 6.68 is better than Kone 6.63. Maybe I'm lying. Maybe it's just, you know, our centre-backs aren't that great. I don't know. I don't understand why. Kone is meant to be one of the best centre-backs in the league. But it, it, it's okay. We'll bring Bear Hill in, and he can take a d decent free kick, even though Oviedo scored a couple. So we'll wait and we'll see. Anyhow, we've also bring Turami in. I just think for this game here, Max Power hasn't been at his best. I'm going to give Turami a little bit of game time. He's been growing. He's probably deserving the start right now. He has so much interest in him as well. Um, it's all dropped off, and now just Benevento, which is great. But he had a lot of Premier League clubs interested in him. Um, there was a case maybe to play Josh Miller, or sorry, Liam Miller off the bench, um, but we decided to go with Chris again, um, and Dadasov keeps his spot up top. Um, I was tempted to maybe even play Bali, but Bali's injured. He picked up a fire, um, a fire strain or a hamstring strain. Um, so he's been out for a couple of days. Uh, he's not 100% fit, could do a job, but we're going to leave him there. And we'll just bring Brian off the bench if we need to, or Max Power, and see how we go. Um, but apart from that, the team's going to be the same. We're going to get into this Barnsley game and see what we can do here. Can we make it with two wins from two? I highly doubt that, you know, I highly doubt that we can. Uh, probably wrong. I, I, I reckon we can back ourselves in here against our home against Barnsley, considering what we did to AFC Wilburton. Um, but a lot of these, um, you know, a lot of these teams have better starts than us. We did have a difficult run, maybe, looking back at it, but at the same time, I still reckon we should have taken more points than we should have, but we, you know, but we didn't. So it, it's a matter of making points up now when we can. That's why I did these two games. I feel like they're so important, considering that these two sides are the sides that came up with us and we beat them both, or we drew to them both late doors and we've made more improvements since then. I feel like these are two games that we needed to win. Another win here today sees us climb up to about 15 points. All of a sudden, we're back in that top half of the table where I want to be. You know, we haven't played any of the big boys yet, but we played Birmingham so far. This will be a game against Barnsley that we played. We played Wilburton. Um, we've also played a few lads down the bottom half of the table that we've drawn to as well, but we'll see how we go. As the highlight comes in with Linus' free kick into Dylan, who's been in some cracking form. Back to Linus, into Turam, who's just a bigger boy in the middle, which I don't mind at all. Dylan switch, looks for Oviedo. Oviedo here in the rain here in the Sunderland. Can he bomb on four, though? Turam, can he pick out the pass? What a ball from Mr. Turam there, the Carrillo, as he sits in the top of the box. Maybe he wants it, he does want it, he turns, will he hit it? Instead, he finds Duncan Watmore, he's one on one. He won't miss that one, and as long as he was on side, that is one nil Sunderland, which he was and there we go 20 minutes in it's Sunderland 1 Barnsley nil, and all of a sudden that attacking spark has come back in these last couple of games Oviedo's ball found Joey Paluzzi in the Turam Turam with the presence of mind just to lay it off the Watmore came back into an onside position no question about it and there we go it is the 1-0 Sunderland we move up to 8 spot with that one there so it's not too bad we actually move ahead of um, AFC Wimbledon and we're not too far away from Barnsley as well we'll see how we go um, Lindsay's ball up the line. They're looking for hedges. Well, Linus gets up, heads away, but only as far as Alex Moa, who's transfer listed. His ball at the top is pretty good to Moore. More of a great first touch. McLaughlin, what a save. Oh, this guy's on fire. Free kick, Bear Hill hit it. Bear Hill! Oh, he's hit the bar. Maybe Oviedo should have taken. He scored two free kicks already. 
Um, but Bear Hill's got 17 free kick take, and he smacked into the bar, the club captain. Unlucky for him. Oviedo doesn't look like he might make it through this game, but I'm pretty sure that Love can play out there fairly well. And I actually think Linus can play out there too, if needs be. Um, but 38 minutes in, that's not going to tell me if he can play out there. Um, we are still 1-0 up and dominating the game as things stand. They're having some chances though on the break, so I wouldn't say we're dominating as much as we dominated Wilburton. But the B1 new up at half time, I'll take that indeed, considering um, the run of form that we have been without scoring goals and then conceding a lot of goals. So there we go. I'm going to say that I'm actually happy with the performance so far. Keep it up. Try and keep morale a little bit higher than what it has been. Um, but a couple of wins, he'll keep morale nice and high as well. In the last game, I told him not to get complacent. But in this game here, I'm going to tell him that we've been happy. Keep playing the way we are. We'll get this win. There we go. If we can see now, I'll put it on my team talk. Maguire, though, his ball back post. What more doesn't get up? Probably the wrong person to be picking up. Dadasov's tool. I don't know why he wasn't in the box, but he does get the ball back, and it's a good switch out to Chris Maguire. He likes coming inside if he can. He works it back inside and finds for Joey Paluzzi. He doesn't look to hit one. Instead, he plays it back out to Maguire. Oviedo's inside if he wants him. He doesn't. Joey Paluzzi again. Out to Dylan. Dylan's ball out to Maguire again. He comes inside now. Still with Maguire. Everyone sitting off him hits it, but straight at Davies. It would have been a great goal for Mr. Maguire. Himself at the moment, everyone fitness wise is looking all right apart from Dylan Oviedo as well. But we're trying to eke out as much time as possible out of Oviedo before we make a change. And yet again, just being on a 6.6, but everyone else at the back is playing well. Um, got to make that change now. Here, um, Love doesn't like it out there. Linus can sort of play out there. I might actually just leave it and try and get this win. Um, with that in mind, because he's on a booking but playing well, so I don't want to take him off. Joe Palouse is not having the best of games here. Turam's having a great game. I'm actually going to move Turam back a line, and we are going to bring on Max Power. Bring him in as his advanced playmaker on support. Um, I've brought on the wrong person. Max Power, please. Box to box midfield is what I want. There we go. And just getting going up and down and really trying to cut this ball out in the middle of the park. And Turam can be a little bit more drawn, um, shielding the back four. We have a cut with 10 minutes left to go. We might make another change here. Um, what more looking not 100% fit? Could bring on Gooch. Could bring on Liam Miller. Um, and saying that, Maguire's been coming back from injury, not having his best game. I'm actually going to bring the youngster Lee Miller on for us on the break. Um, and we've about five minutes to go. I was going to go more defensive, but it looks like it's a chance here for Barnsley. Potts now on the ball. What a tackle from Mr. Liam Miller. But it's full back to Moa. His ball out wide, looking there. It's passed Oviedo into Taylor. Taylor with a chance to whip one back post. Header. The McLaughlin's beat at the near post, and we're 1-1 in a game that we have dominated yet again, and we've conceded another late one. What is new? It has been the story of uh, Wilburton. Uh, Wilburton has been the story of um, Sunderland so far. Taylor's ball was a great ball back post, the header, and in the end, I thought John nearly bailed us out, but Mr. McLaughlin couldn't get there. And with that in mind, we're going to go more aggressive, and as soon as we go to click the highlight, it is another highlight. Linus running inside. His bull finds Max Power. Can he turn and hit one? Instead, he looks for Dadasov peeling it into this wide position. Finds Turam. Does Turam want to hit one? Instead, what a back heel and a Max Power. Back to Dylan. Dylan. Josh Miller. Miller. Liam Miller. What a hit from the son of the legend. I don't know why he's the son of a legend, but there we go. Liam Miller, what a goal. Liam. There we go. Picked it up first time across the keeper. Top bins. Pick this one out, ladies and gentlemen. Off the bench, he scored again. He's done nothing for us, really, in all the starts. But twice as a substitute, he has scored some big goals. One that was offside last last week this time though no question about it he gets the ball looks up first time cross the keeper look at this one arrow into the top corner pick that one out keeper you can't Liam Miller what a strike lad there we go pause the game let's go more defensive let's shut up shop because I'm not making the same mistake and waiting for the last five minutes just keep the ball time waste as much as you want please boys um, more narrow that is fine dribble less be more disciplined you can work into the box if you get that high up. Time waste whenever possible. Slow it down. Hold your shape. Regroup. Take shorter kicks because it helps us keep the ball. That is fine. Drop back. Don't use the offside trap. Just Don't even. And just slightly less. That is fine. Get off that is solve. Go to five at the back, please. Get Kone back there. Miller and Watmore can stay up there. Just provide us an outlet if needs be. And there we go. Hold on. Shout concentrate please boys it's five minutes out of time i don't know how they've come up with that what a strike from liam miller there we go that is going to be game set and match you would have oh it's actually a minute ago i thought it was 94 minutes of out of time i'm now don't do it to me game because i said that linus puram here we go just keep it boys that's it knock it around yourselves that's it if you have to go all the way back to the keeper that's not a problem dylan don't lose it 
Oh, Turam, he's done well there. There we go. His ball, oh, it was a difficult ball, but he found Oviedo. His ball finds it. Liam Miller off the bench. Miller, what a foul. Instead, it's not. It's play on. He's given advantage. I thought Liam Miller did the smart thing there. Just foul him as soon as you lost it. There's 10 seconds, and then they get up the field. Potts there. Tayboy, Buffalo with a chance maybe to whip it across late doors. He will whip it across late doors. You would imagine. How have you blown then, referee? I'm not going to complain. But the referee has blown as they're about to whip that ball in. Unbelievable. We win 2-1. In a game that we should have won, and we should not even give him a goal, but there we go. Liam Miller off the bench gets man of the match. Well done, lads. I'm happy with that. We have to watch that again, don't we? Um, goals, yes. Uh, Liam Miller with the strike. Let's do it. Let's just watch it again in all its glory. Linus, his ball inside, found max power. The son of a legend. I don't know how I've come with that, but the son of a legend. That's going to be the title of this episode. Dylan Miller, what a hit. What a hit, son. It could be one of the goals of the season. You never know with FM. But there we go. Get team talk done. Continue forward. That's game over. We won two from two, and all of a sudden we're up the table. Things look a little bit better from our run and form all of a sudden as well. We'll do a little bit of a recap of the episode. I will, we'll talk about um, Mr. Lee. We'll, we'll do the press conference. Please tell me Liam Miller is in here. Um, we're not going to be joining the same. It was a joy to behold. He was in fine form today. I don't want to comment on speculation. Um, surely you have something more to ask me about. They didn't ask me specifically about Liam Miller's goal, but it was a joy to watch. That moves us up into eighth on 14 points. We're only 15, we're only one point behind Barnsley, who we just beat. We just beat Wilburton, who we've jumped as well. In terms of our fixtures, you know, we've got Sheffield Wednesday, who are first. I'm very tempted to give you that game there, bring Millsborough away, and just because Sheffield are first, it's tempted to. Um, Norwich is one of the big boys. Huddersfield, Fulham are down in 23rd. Russell so would we'll do the Fulham game. Huddersfield as well, former Premier League side. What have we got in November? Leeds. Leeds is another big game. I'm very tempted to give you the Sheffield game and then the Leeds game as two separate episodes. So Lee, Sheffield coming up after we play Middlesbrough, um, especially if we beat Middlesbrough, that could be a big game for us in terms of maybe a promotion push if we want to. And then the Leeds as well, but you know, in November, and then we'll pick a game in December that we'll do probably Stoke. Um, and then we'll do Swansea in January as we didn't do them first time round. I think that's the plan for the episode so far. Um, my, in terms of streaming today, a uh, link in the description below as always. Um, go follow us on the stream, press the follow button. Also go and uh, you know like us on Twitter so you know what's going on. Can I say this uh, in terms of the stream tonight? We're probably going to stream FM if I'm feeling well after work. Also depends if I decide to go to the LA United game. If I get out of work early because I'm not feeling 100%, I would actually go to the soccer. I wouldn't take the time off. But um, and just because it's LA United are playing, maybe. I don't know. I'll probably just watch it at home. I'll say that now. I'm not feeling great because of my earache and the sinuses are playing up. I am known for some sinus infections. It doesn't matter too much anyway because I'll probably just work out the day because I'm a tough little cookie. Why have I got myself a tough little cookie? This is so rambly. Anyhow, if we are home and we do feeling well, we will jump on the stream. I'm gonna, I've got 16, 17 games left of foot champs to play. I'm home all day tomorrow. I sometimes stream Monday mornings. If I don't stream tonight, I'm actually hopping on someone else's stream and talk about the FM League, FM Structured. If you go type him in the Twitch, you'll find his Twitch. I'm not gonna link it in the description below. Um, that's only for people who are still watching this and know that we are in the FM League. We are managing Liverpool for, um, and that starts this week coming up. We do have West Ham. I think it's Thursday morning my time. So another reason to go join us on the Twitch stream. But anyway, that is the end of the episode. From Damien, Bright Lights, Sunderland, the Stadium of Light. From a Liam Miller special, the son of a legend. I don't know why, who, who's his dad. I don't know. We're going to find this out now as we end the episode. Where are you, Liam? Is it like favourite personnel dad? None. There you go. I don't care. Your dad's a legend, mate. We have won two games in a row. It's a strange feeling in the championship. We're up to eight. Thank you for watching this episode of Bright Lights. Episode 12 is done and dusted. Thank you and goodbye. Liam Miller, what a gun.